Welcome to my channel, Study with Science. So, whenever a person has to grow, what are the things required? The hormones. So, does the release of hormones immediately make the person to grow? No. So, uh, the thing that is to be happen is the hormones should bind to the specific receptors that are present on the cell surface, and then the cell can show its specific action uh, that are needed to show the uh, to show some specific response, like. It might be the muscle contraction. So, whenever there's some ligands bind to the receptors, uh, it shows some actions in the cell, and then the cell releases the calcium ions, and then the muscle contractions happens. So, for any kind of action, the primary thing that is to be uh, required is the binding of ligand to the receptors that are present on the cell surface. So, here the ligand may be anything like the Hormones that are present uh, in that are re uh, released from the endocrine system of our body, or they may be the toxins that are released to specific bacteria or the virus in, in a diseased condition, or the ligand may be the drugs that we take, or the ligands may be the neurotransmitters. So, for the for any of these kind of things to be shown, the action, the primary thing that is required is binding of such compound to the receptors that are present on the cell surface. So, in this video, we'll be learning about the transducer mechanisms in the receptor pharmacology. So, let's get started. So, what is a receptor? A receptor is a glycoprotein compound that is present on the cell surface and which recognizes the ligand and binds and allows the binding of the ligand. So if you take this as a cell surface and in the cell surface there has to be some receptor and this receptor allows for the ligand, recognizes the ligand which may be the endothelial like the, the ligand that may be the belong to the body or the ligand may be from the external source like the drug, the external source ligand means the, like the drugs or the toxins of a disease etc. And the ligands that belongs to our body means uh, like the hormones or the neurotransmitters, whatever it may be. So the receptor is a glycoprotein compound that are present in the cell surface, which uh, uh, recognizes the ligand and allows the binding of the ligand to the receptor. And now we are discussing about the transducer mechanisms in the receptors. So what are these transducer mechanisms? The transducer mechanisms. So after binding of the ligand to the receptor, they should show some specific mechanism inside the cell or on the cell membrane that make the cell to show a specific action. So these are the transducer mechanisms. Now we'll be learning about G-protein coupled receptors. So first of all, why the name G-protein coupled receptors? So here the G-protein coupled receptors is or, or can also be said to be a seven, uh, seven helical transmembrane structures. So let us take a look of the receptor structure. So here, this is the cell membrane. And this is the structure of the receptor. It consists of seven helical, helical portions. And so this is also called a serpentine molecule. So this consists of seven helical, so it is called a septa helical structure or seven membrane, seven helical transmembrane structure, whatever it may be. So whenever the ligand, so they, there is a two portions in the structure, right? One thing is uh, one some portion of the receptor uh, lies in the extracellular part of the cell, and one portion of the receptor lies in the intracellular part of the cell. So the ligand comes and binds to the extracellular part of the receptor. So imagine that the ligand is binding here. Okay, so here this is a receptor. And what about the G protein? Yes. So here the, on the cell membrane, there is a proteinaceous structure which hangs through a uh, lipid compounds. And this is a this is a trimeric structure. This is a trimeric structure, means which has three subunits. One subunit is alpha and one thing is beta and one thing is gamma. So this is called as trimeric protein. Okay. So here in this the alpha subunit, that alpha subunit of this trimeric protein is bound with 
GDP. I am saying in an active, inactive condition. So whenever this ligand must not bind to the receptor. Okay. So this is a receptor and there is a protein. Uh, which has three subunits, alpha, beta, and gamma. And alpha subunit of this primary protein is bound with GDP. So that is why it is called G protein couple receptors. I hope it was clear. So this is about the name itself. So now let us discuss about the transducer mechanism. So whenever the ligand was binding here, it brings up some conformational changes in the receptor. The conformational changes are not exactly the covalent changes or some kind of chemical changes, just as a com conformational, like a physical changes, uh, we can say it as a physical change, okay? Some conformational change in the receptor. And then, uh, it now whenever the ligand is binding, we can say that the receptor was activated due to the binding of the uh, ligand. So whenever the activation of the receptor happens, this is a, this is a far away from this uh, receptor, right? So whenever the ligand must bind to it, this receptor comes closer to the, this, this proteinaceous compound comes closer to the receptor. Let us see that. So, see, after activating of, activating of the receptor with the ligand, the proteinaceous compound, the protein structure comes closer to the ligand and bind with the ligand, the bind bound with the receptor. Here the C, this is the alpha subunit, this is beta subunit and this is gamma subunit. So, whenever this happens, what I have said, the alpha subunit is bound with GDP. So, whenever the activation happens, whenever this comes closer to the receptor, the GDP is exchanged with the GTP, presenting the cytosolic membrane. So, here, alpha subunit exchanges its GDP with the GTP. So now the alpha subunit was bound with GTP after activation with the ligand. So now they after, what happens after the after exchanging of GDP with GDP? So here this is a primary compound, right? The alpha and alpha, beta, and gamma are together. Now this alpha subunit, which was bound with the GTP, separates from the primary compound and moves farther. Okay. So the alpha subunit separates from the uh, from the primary structure and moves farther from the primary structure. So now this beta and gamma remains here, and the alpha structure, alpha alpha subunit, which was bound with the GTP, moves farther. So now what happens? This there are two mechanisms here. First we discuss the first one. So this alpha, which was bound with GTP, activates. A compound that is present here, which is called adenylate cyclase. Adenyl cyclase. The alpha structure which, bound, which was bound to GTP activates a compound that is present on the cell surface that, that is hanging from the cell surface, which is called adenylate cyclase. This adenyl cyclase converts ATP that is present in the cell with 2 CAMP. So, I hope you all know the significance of the CAMP. CAMP here, this is the first messenger, the ligand which was coming and binding to the receptor is a first messenger. Means, it was saying a cell to show the specific action. So, the cell is undergoing all this mechanism and leaving the secondary messenger here and it was resulting in the formation of secondary messenger here which further uh, gives messages to the cell to show to to show some response. So here CAMP acts as a secondary messenger. So there are various functions that CAMP can do. It, uh, one among that is so here the CAMP we are discussing the functions of the CAMP. Okay, one among the functions of CAMP is activation of protein kinase C. So this protein kinase C is a is a consists of four subunits, means four parts, and one part is called regulatory domain, and another part is called enzymatic domain. 
So whenever the CAMP activates this protein kinase C, the regulated domain separates from separates from the enzymatic domain. And now what is remaining? Only the enzymatic domain. So what is the enzyme that is present in the protein kinase C? It is kinase. So the significance of the enzyme kinase is it will be helpful in phosphorylation of several things. So the kinase in turn results in phosphorylation of different kinds of substitutes and results in different types of cellular processing like Krebs cycle, glycolysis. In the Krebs cycle, we'll see different different places. We'll see phosphorylation, and those are the phosphorylation in turn results in turn. Um, uh, happens from this entire thing, okay? In the transcription, in the translation, while happening the uh, G one S and G two phases of the cell cycle, so all these things are uh, all these things are interlinked with the receptor transducer mechanism. So this phosphorylation leads to uh, in turn results in different kinds of cellular responses. So. This is the thing happening here, and now we'll say this as um, adenyl cyclase CAMP pathway. I hope it's clear. So this is one thing happening here. Now there is another kind of mechanism. So this alpha subunit, which was found with the GTP, can activate. Now this will activate. See. Which is present in the cell membrane, phospholipase C. So the name itself indicates phospholipase. It means it is consisting of a lipase enzyme. So the action of the lipase enzyme is breaking down of the lipids. So this phospholipase enzyme, which was activated with the alpha subunit that is bound with the GTP, what what does it do? It cleaves the PIP2, phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate into IP3 and DAG. Here the IP3 is a lipophilic compound, so it can enter into the, it can pass through the lipids and enter into the cell membrane, whereas DAG is a lipophobic compound and it remains in the cell membrane itself. IP3 is inositol 145 triphosphate and DAG is diacylglycerol. So see this IP3. Now we are discussing. We are discussing about the functions of IP3 and DAG itself. So this IP3. So the the main function of IP3 here exists in the endoplasmic reticulum. So if you think this is the endoplasmic reticulum, which consists of calcium channels. So here there are calcium channels in the endoplasmic reticulum. So IP3. Bounds to this binds to this calcium channels that are present in the endoplasmic reticulum, and IP3 mediate the uh, flow of calcium calcium ions outside of the endoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol. So here IP3 bounds to this uh, uh, calcium channels of the endoplasmic reticulum. Thus, the calcium ions gets released into the cytosol from the endoplasmic reticulum. So whenever the calcium ions are releasing, several mechanisms may happen. So uh, another another thing that will happen is the released calcium ions, uh, the released calcium ions or the calcium ions which are existed in the cytosol now binds with the diacylglycerol. Okay, binds with diacylglycerol, and in turn these two together activates protein kinase C again. So, what I have said, the same mechanism, protein kinase C, in turn leads to phosphorylation of different compounds. Thus, cellular responses happen. So, let us have a glance here. So, this alpha subunit, which was bound with GTP, activates phospholipase C. And this phospholipase C, as it is consisting of an enzyme lipase, which can break down the lipids, the phospholipase C is breaking down phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate into two compounds IP3 inositol triphosphate and DAG diacylglycerol. This IP3 
binds to the calcium channels that are present in the endoplasmic reticulum and mediate the flow of calcium channels from the endoplasmic reticulum to the cytosol. And uh, several cellular responses can happen. And uh, the DAG, uh, the DAG binds with the calcium ions that are present in the cytosol. And these calcium ions together with the DAG uh, leads to the activation of protein kinase C. Hence, there is the kinase enzyme which helps in phosphorylation and thus different cellular responses happen. So here I already mentioned that the ligand may be different things. It may be the drug, it may be the, the neurotransmitters, it may be the growth hormones, it may be the toxins of a disease. So for example, if you take some, if you, if you take some contractility has to happen, means the cell has, the cell should acquire more amount of calcium ions. So you are, have, I hope you got how the calcium ions are increasing in the cell. So whenever some toxin or the drug or the neurotransmitter or the growth hormone binds to the ligand, then all these mechanisms happen which which uh, we require to be happen and thus a normal physiology occur. I hope it's very clear for you. And if you like this video, please like and share with your friends. And if you have any queries, ask any questions or answer any questions, please comment below. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.